over the past couple of months, we've been talking quite a bit about the hot new thing in Pop OS, the Pop OS Cosmic DE, a whole new DE written from the ground up in Rust. But it's not the only thing that System76 and Pop OS have been working on. The other day, someone sent me this Pop OS Core work in progress. Immutable base. Now, in case anybody forgot, Pop OS as it stands, not an immutable distro, not immutable in even like a hybrid half sort of way. This seems like it would be a massive change, but there's not really anything here. This is the extent of the README, so I wasn't planning to talk about it but it did lead to a lot of speculation on the internet. Is Pop OS becoming silver blue? Why would I only want to install from a flat pack? Do you truly not know how bad an idea this is? And all manner of unfounded statements based on three words. There were people who were going to drop Pop OS based on three words. That was until MM Stick, otherwise known as Michael Murphy, chimed in on the conversation. He is a software engineer from System76 and heavily involved in the development of this project, so luckily he could explain what's actually going on. Now, most importantly, and probably also most confusingly, when we say immutable base, we don't necessarily mean immutable distro. This is something that MM Stick wanted to very clearly separate. These don't mean the same thing. Turning Pop OS into an immutable distro would be a terrible idea and would kill the project. Not because immutable distros are bad, but because Pop OS isn't an immutable distro. People who are using it before don't expect immutability, so adding that in would completely confuse people. It would be like Debian all of a sudden being an immutable distro. It just doesn't make sense. Now, I'm gonna read some quotes and expand upon what's being said. An immutable base is having the essential packages pre-installed into an image that's mounted on boot before everything else. For a Debian system, you can create this environment with debootstrap or debootstrap? I guess it's debootstrap. This application is this one right here. Debootstrap is a tool which will install a Debian based system into a subdirectory of another already installed system. It doesn't require an installation CD, just access to a Debian repository. It can also be installed and run from another operating system. So for instance, you can bootstrap to install Debian onto an unused partition from a running Gen2 system. It can be used to create a root file system for a machine of a different architecture, which is known as cross bootstrapping. There is also a largely equivalent version written in C called C to bootstrap. <laughs> What a name, C de bootstrap, which is smaller. So the simple idea is creating this core part of the system using an application like the bootstrap. They didn't actually confirm whether that is what they're going to be using. And then that's going to be separate from the rest of the system. And he goes on to say an immutable base can be used to create a pure immutable OS but it's not necessary to enforce that for the entire OS. So if for whatever reason in the future they wanted to have Pop! OS immutable, they could go and expand that to be the entirety of the root. But in this case, that's not what they're doing. By base of the system, by core of the system, what it seems like they mean is the desktop environment and the absolute essentials to make the system Pop! OS. I don't know why you would be, but you probably don't have to be worried about an immutable Pop! OS existing. He also goes on to say, pure immutability comes at the cost of some user experience, since a lot of the ecosystem 
isn't designed that way, so a hybrid approach combining the better aspects of both will be easier to use in practice today. So while there is tooling like flat pack snaps and app images, a lot of the applications you want to install are not going to be available in those systems. And up until very, very recently, we didn't even have tools like DistroBox. DistroBox now and also Apex on vanilla OS and the, uh, the Blend OS package manager, these make it incredibly easy to install any application you want on your system. But it doesn't address everything. It's still not going to address drivers or custom kernels and things like that. So you still want to have some way to address those particular issues. AB root, OS tree, other solutions available out there have different approaches for going and doing so, but they're always going to be less convenient than having to have this immutable system workaround. Now, there's also the question of how does this immutable core, immutable base, actually play with the rest of the system. So what's going to be done is you can have an immutable base and then use overlay FS to layer a mutable file system on top of it. Then you can offer an OS with an immutable base with atomic updates and have apt working as normal in the mutable layer on top of that. So overlay FS is something you probably maybe have not have heard of. This is probably the best explanation. This is from the kernel patch when overlay FS was added back in 2014. Overlay FS allows one usually read write directory tree to be overlaid onto another read only directory tree. All modifications go to the upper writable layer. This type of mechanism is often used for live CDs, but there's a wide variety of other uses. The implementation differs from other Union file system implementations in that after a file is opened, all operations go directly to the underlying lower or upper file systems. This simplifies the implementation and allows native performance in these cases. But with this hybrid, readable, writable situation, you might think you lose out on one of the major benefits of having an immutable system easy rollbacks. So on Silverblue, for example, if for whatever reason the latest update is completely balked, you can just roll back the system updates to the previous version. That isn't entirely lost with this immutable base. So through the use of ButterFS subvolumes, it's possible to take snapshots to roll back those changes. Now, with what this hybrid approach offers, you might be wondering how do you install applications? You may have heard me say so earlier, but I didn't exactly make a big deal out of it. The way you do so is the way you normally install packages. You just use sudo apt, you use flatpak, you use cargo, you use nix, you use git clone, you use all of the things you would normally be using because you're not installing applications into the immutable part of the file system. When you go and run something like apt, it'll be done in the mutable in the writable part. Honestly, until I started looking into this, I had no idea this immutable base approach was really possible. I thought that if you had an immutable root, it was an immutable root. There was no way to have things like apt actually working. I know there's obviously things like live CDs where they're not really writable in the same way and things like app will still work, but I never really considered how they were actually functioning. And I know things like AB root exist as well, where they're kind of doing a similar thing where you have the root you're currently using, which is immutable, and then the root that you can modify, and those get swapped back and forth and synced together. But that's a whole set of operations the user needs to worry about. While this might seem like a side project that doesn't really matter, the last thing that MMSTIX says is this would be a required item to have finished to release Cosmic D in a future PopOS release, or to make a new PopOS release in general. Basically, this is happening in the future, and you're going to see it in a future release. I am very curious to see how this model plays out in the future in the hands of users. Right now, it's in 
a super early stage. There's no documentation. There's like a couple of commits and it's probably still a good, you know, couple of months away. I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't make its way into the next release and ends up being for the release after that. But the best case scenario is users don't even notice that anything changes and go about their day. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you care at all they have an immutable base? Do you think they should go full immutable with a pure immutable distro? I would love to know. And if you like the video, go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, and my barrel pay linked in the description down below. And that's going to be it for me. So I'm out.